Uh, my name is Maris Plateis. It's spelled M-A-R-I-S. And uh, I was born in Latvia. Came over here as a displaced person after World War II. That's why I maybe sound a little funny, but you know, it, English being my second language, <laughs> you know how that goes. Well, I do uh, all sorts of things. I do acrylics on canvas, I do pen and inks, I do etching, and uh, play with my grandchildren. All the necessary things in life that keep me inspired. When I was a youngster back in uh, Europe before World War II, it was just the end of depression worldwide. And as kids, we had nothing really to play with. So we drew pictures in the sand. We did uh, things from found objects and kind of did the actual normal kid thing. But then as, as things unfolded and the war broke out and we became displaced persons kicking around Europe, uh, losing some years of schooling, the art was always up in front of me. I could use a, get a pencil somewhere, a piece of paper, and do some sketching, and it sort of became very ingrained in me. By the time we came to the States, it was a natural to get through high school. I did a lot of fancy covers for book reports and illustrations and, and doing little footnotes where I couldn't articulate so well in a language, I did it graphically. So it kept going, and uh, by the time I finished high school, I got a scholarship to the museum school for the first year, and you know, the rest is history, as they say. But I was always interested in the visual, and to this day, I can never understand how kids can say, when are we gonna be there, when are we gonna be there? Because for me, traveling in an automobile, seeing the changing scenery, every second of the way is so beautiful, so gratifying. I, I've never complained about being stuck in traffic even. I look up the skylight sometimes and I see a, a, a red-tailed hawk flying overhead or some passing clouds and it's, it's always beautiful. Life is good. So my inspiration is something that evolved and it keeps going. And for years and years I've been building on that. And today, my quiet moments, walking around the woods, around the old farm, I, I see an old tree, I, I see something that inspires me. I don't sit there and paint it right away. I visit it several times and then have it imprinted in my mind to the point where I can do a painting or a pen and ink from recall. My imagination probably was first honed when I was uh, sitting in a boarding classroom looking out the window, whether it was in college or high school or grammar school, I would always be imagining things or looking for something that I could doodle on the paper. And, and with that sort of uh, imagination and kind of training uh, within myself, I would find these subjects when I'm going around the countryside looking at uh, uh, subjects to paint, I already have formulated some sort of a composition in my mind that I'm looking for. Or, in other words, the plein air observation augments the imagination and vice versa. So one hand washes the other, and it takes both of those. In my particular case, my imagination often starts from nothing, from one mark on a paper. Uh, on a canvas, it's a little different. I like to get into a whole messy thing and then pull out something that might emerge from it. In pen and ink work or etching, I simply start with some loose lines and subdivide the paper or the plate into manageable portions that I can sort of manipulate to get my basic dynamics of the composition. And then from there it evolves. But sometimes the evolution is even more naive than that. I'll start off with a blank piece of paper, take a crow quill pen, and just start scratching away lines and they grow into a shape, and next thing you know, that shape sprouts some branches and becomes a tree. So it's, it's, a, it's a thing that I've been doing for so long, I don't remember how it really began. But it's a very satisfying thing for me because it's, uh, it's therapeutic. I can be watching a Patriots game and, and do a pen and ink drawing of a totally different feeling, a different place, different subject. So it's, uh, I, I don't know really if I can answer that question 
in any cohesive way other than rambling around as I do. But so is the actual imagination. It rambles around till something develops. I like pen and inks and acrylics and uh, etchings just about equally. I have four grandchildren. If I had three, you know what I'm saying. Uh, I, I love them equally. So there are times when things work out better than others. Like during this particularly harsh winter we had, I did a lot of uh, pen and ink drawings. I brought my drawing table right into the living room and set it up there just like it was part of the furniture. I had a side table with all my stuff on it and when people came and went, that's how I lived. My studio was just too cold to be kept open all this time without uh, wasting a lot of firewood or electricity. So I uh, did a lot of pen and inks and some etching plates while in the in the living room. But in the summertime, I do a lot more outdoor painting and I focus more on the acrylics on canvas. So as far as the annual production of work, I would say it's pretty, pretty evenly spread amongst the three. Uh, to paraphrase uh, Edgar Degas a bit, uh, drawing is not what you see, it's what you want the viewers to see. And I can totally agree with that because when I do any work that involves something that attracted me to that particular image, whether it's a plain air piece or something that I actually invented, I would like to have the viewer get some of the same feeling that I had doing it. And sometimes that's rather elusive, but I get so much feedback from people who say, you know, I like the way you handle the uh, fine lines in the trees with the uh, brush stro or the pen strokes or brush strokes or whatever. And the combination of a uh, uh, little bit of calligraphy with drawing, with observation, a little lost and found, hard edge, soft edge kind of thing, where there's a cert certain movement that I'm trying to create on the surface so that the viewer's eye will follow what I would like them to follow, what basically interested me. And when I get enough feedback from people who actually see that, what I'm trying to show them, then I'm very gratified. And, and these are usually the folks who wind up buying a piece of work. You know? So I'm very happy about that. I like to take away something from everyone. I don't have one particular artist that I idolize. I don't have one that I say, gee, I wish I could paint like so-and-so. Uh, that is not my, never was my intention, never was my interest. But I like so many things from so many people that help to control my impulses a bit. But ultimately, I think that uh, without being um, conceited or anything, but you have to like your own creations enough to keep on doing it. Otherwise, if you're always searching for inspiration from someone else, uh, it's going to be one heck of a trip. And like Picasso said, you know, inspiration is real, exists, it exists, but it has to find you working. So if you are, start doing something, the inspiration will come. And as far as other artists go, uh, I could probably list every artist that, whose work I've ever seen and gotten something out of that particular artist. Well, I've been a member of the Guild of Austin Artists since uh, about mid-70s. Uh, Loring Coleman asked me one day, after we had a show in Concord for uh, a kind of twosome uh, one-man show or two-person show, he said, we're going to have a meeting at the Guild of the, of the Board of Directors. Why don't you bring a few pieces in? I think you'd like to, you probably fit well in that organization. And, and I'll be darned if I didn't uh, get selected and elected. And it was, uh, it was a most thrilling moment. I think a lot of people have said that. Probably everyone who's ever been involved being invited or, or elected into the guild membership, that it's, it's a fantastic organization. You've got to remember, back in the 70s, Boston was a lot more accessible than it is now. And you could actually park across the street or right next to the guild, if you're lucky, circling the block once or twice. 
but it was such an honor, such an awesome experience to walk in this place that I had visited from time to time as a kid in high school. And it's like walking into the MFA. Here are these old master paintings of the Boston School and all. And to be part of that was, uh, wow, you know, I just couldn't contain myself. And in those days, I don't know how much uh, people know about the guild, who are probably painting today, but there's a lady called by, by name of Phyllis Maloney, who ran the guild. She was a dignified old Boston lady, erect as a, as a ramrod, and she had the demeanor of someone who would say, we are representing million dollar pieces of art. And you walked in there, and you weren't being intimidated by her, but you were so totally, uh, how could I put it, impressed by her presence that any conversation you struck up with her, she would have all the answers. She would have not just about the Guild, but about the Copley, about the Boston scene altogether, about the artists who were there now or who were deceased and been long gone. And she would tell everybody about everything. And I thought, wow, this is such a, such a place. And it still is, even though hands have changed many times and uh, a lot of things have happened to the Guild. But to me, it was uh, my first boost into having a professional career as an artist. Because at that time, I was concurrently working as a graphic designer and illustrator in the corporate world, too. And I was trying to balance the two. But to have uh, this kind of a outlet with such prestige and such, uh, um, how could I put it, um, credibility, it was like the doors are opening. My current project is something that came about accidentally almost, but I'm going to have a one-man show in my hometown of my native Latvia coming this August. And I'm busy as heck to get things ready for that and editing and sorting out paintings and framing and doing all the things that uh, one has to do for a solo show that involves about 18 to 20 paintings.